Welcome to this first episode of Learning from Audio History. I'm Tom Martin, the executive publisher of the Next Screen Network, which includes the Absolute Sound, Hi-Fi Plus, and Winding Road. This series is going to talk about something uh, that we hope is helpful, which is the history of audio. Uh, each of our speakers will reflect on moments in their hi-fi careers, if you will, their experience with hi-fi, and talk about what they learned and what they observed. So we hope you can pick up at least two things from this. One is uh, you can pick up some of the history of audio, which is kind of interesting. For some of you, that might even be a trip down memory lane. Um, but even more, we hope you can learn from the experience that each of us has had with different equipment and different experiences using that equipment. So I'm going to start with actually two products uh, that were from roughly the same era in the 1960s. The Acoustic Research AR4X loudspeaker and the KLH-17. These were both small bookshelf speakers, so-called bookshelf speakers. Uh, the AR was an 8-inch two-way, and I think the KLH was an 8 or a 10-inch two-way, but they were very similar in terms of the speaker complement that they had. The interesting thing about these speakers is they came about 10 years into the period of introducing a technology called acoustic suspension. And the idea really before acoustic suspension was created was that the uh, rear wave of the bass driver would be exhausted or absorbed into what was called an infinite baffle, just a big box, fundamentally. And the simplified version of the acoustic suspension notion was that you could put the bass driver, the bass speaker, into a smaller box and use the air that was trapped inside the sealed cabinet to create a spring kind of effect, and that spring kind of effect uh, lowered the resonant point of the bass system. And by lowering the resonant point, you got better reproduction for that cabinet size at lower frequencies. Uh, it worked fairly well. Uh, two things that really stand out in my mind learning from the, these, which were considered entry-level speakers by their manufacturers. Uh, and I should not hesitate to mention that acoustic research is thought of as the inventor of the acoustic suspension concept. Um, and KLH was founded by a team of people who left AR and went on to found KLH because they wanted to explore variations on this idea. Anyway, uh, the first thing I think we learned was that the new technology worked. You could reproduce relatively low frequencies in a heretofore unusually small cabinet, so that was great. And that smaller cabinet size allowed the manufacturers to produce a product that could be brought to a lower price point, which was nice. And I would say learning number one from uh, this particular class of speakers, although you could draw a circle around all of the acoustic suspension work that was being done at the time, uh, this lowered price point brought hi-fi to, I'm going to say, the masses. 
but in particular, and this was a seminal moment, it brought hi-fi to college students who previously probably wouldn't have been able to afford such high quality reproduction. It brought it there because of price point. It also brought it there because of size. If you're trying to run a stereo system in a dorm room, you need relatively small speakers and a large speaker system, two large speaker systems that's the size of this whole cabinet rather than the size of one of these small boxes behind me uh, just isn't going to work. So acoustic suspension was kind of a breakthrough in the sense that it brought high quality music reproduction to a much larger group of people and kind of made the audio industry what it is today. The other piece that we all learned, and this was well discussed and advertised in the audio media and by the manufacturers themselves, is that when you took the speakers and put them into a small box and lowered the resonant point and got more bass, there was a trade-off. And in engineering, you learn that just about every gain comes with some kind of a trade-off. And the trade-off in particular that came from the acoustic suspension principle was that the speaker was less efficient. That means it took more power from the amplifier to make a given level of sound. The genius of the acoustic suspension work was that it happened in the same time period, the mid-1960s, when the electronics part of the audio industry was going through a transition from tube electronics, which tended to be relatively low power, and at the time this was thought of as 30 or perhaps 50 watts per channel was uh, fairly high powered, we were going through a transition from tubes to transistor power amplification, which made it less costly to have high power levels and allowed uh, significantly higher power eventually to be produced in this kind of time frame. We'll come back and talk about some of the power amplifiers that were part of this breakthrough but because solid state amplification was coming on the scene at the same time as acoustic suspension speakers were becoming popular, this means that the necessary power to a degree came along to make the acoustic suspension principle really work in practice. Now, the piece I learned, I had KLH-17s, that was the thing I could afford as a teenager and uh, to be honest with you I loved them uh, and they really allowed me for my first taste of the high-end audio experience uh, what I learned later on was that uh, power isn't the only dimension of amplification and the quality and the distortion levels and the dynamic capability of amplifiers are also very important. We'll come back and talk more extensively about that when we review maybe the seminal loudspeaker of the late 60s and early 70s, the large advent loudspeaker. Uh, I'll be back to talk about that in episode two, but for now, I hope you've enjoyed episode one. Uh, remember to subscribe, hit the subscribe button or bell, and uh, also please sign up for our newsletter. You'll get all sorts of articles about audio equipment and music, and we think you'll really enjoy it. So thanks for joining us.